Hello and welcome to the deck tech portion of a new video. This time I approach the timeless format with my actually favorite card on Arena in Venota Joiner of Forces. She is a pretty good human that puts other humans into play that are attacking and indestructible. It's obviously a very powerful effect. And uh, by the way, in regards to that, I don't know about you, but one might ask him, or I guess herself, the question, where are the big boys? Where are the like, um, expensive Venota hits, which are um, supposed to win a thy game once you hit them, but uh, that's the thing. You want to win. It, it's timeless. The cards are crazy cheap. And um, this here is basically, which I guess you can call her, the good enough Venota, which most of the time, by the way, if you time her right, set her up properly, still wins with the triggers anyways. And all these triggers, slash humans, uh, plus of course all the other creatures in there, are all not only playable, but I think actually really good cards. Uh, so yeah, the, the mana cost is what sets these guys apart by a huge margin, towards the usually uh, more or even much more expensive counterparts, if you just draw them into your hand instead of hitting them off Venota. Because usually you cannot simply afford to hold these expensive cards in hand, and timeless at least. From my experience, at least, it just does not work. Sure, it is great if you hit the big boys of the Venota, but if you're playing high quality cards yourself and interact with the opponent, as I just mentioned, a Venota with three, four, or five triggers, even in a deck like this, usually still wins. And then, of course, for example, in this case, are able to interact with the opponent in an actual meaningful way so that you just don't need to go over the top, usually with Venota, if that makes sense. I really do believe in that, and now I'm gonna go over those uh, cheaper cards. Um, I guess I should mention before that there are, of course, other ways to approach the Minota archetype, not just that. For example, back then in Standard, I preferred like Pyre of Heroes, Graveyard, and Sacrifice Shells. In Historic, I even already uploaded a video on Bard class Legends Minota. And of course, there are like a bunch of timeless versions that could be good, like Legends combo with Eomia, Yawgmoth combo, Reanimator, and Natural Order kind of approaches. But yeah, don't really have the time in here. I think the deck tech I fear will be long enough. And uh, yeah, if you have questions about variations like that, let me know in the like comment section, I guess. Okay, so uh, basically what I did is, uh, I mean, I knew these cards, but I went pretty much over all the creatures on Arena, and these are the best ones, I think, that don't have like other specific deck building requirements, like Domain or a ton of non-creature spells, uh, that, let's say, have the highest power level for their mana cost, uh, with their effects in regards to the timeless metagame, if that makes sense, I think. And then one uniting characteristic, if you haven't noticed it already, is, uh, aside from the one drops and Venota herself, they all actually have EDP effects. Which, uh, by the way, un unless you run into a strict proctor, that happened once to me, only once, uh, it's, it's not a meta deck, is actually really good. It's really relevant because of all the, the cheap removal spells, basically. And that's just a great way to counter that, which is relevant, right, in your creature deck. <laughs> and yeah, by the way, speaking of countering things, that's also something that's not particularly good versus this deck, with uh, two Kevin's main, one side, and then the four halflings. And then removing hair can also be tough with the givers, the dreamers, ephemerates, hand hate, uh, and so on. It can be uh, tough to stop what we're doing, or what I'm doing. But yeah, I also have to stop what they're doing, since uh, the decks are good. So let's go over the two drops, maybe, perhaps, uh, since they are mostly hate wars, kind of. Which I guess you could actually say is kind of a theme of the deck, um, to be some sort of death and taxes deck. Maybe I should actually change that. Motor. Last and Texas. Yeah, um, with also some built-in solid card advantage slash plus Renota as a curve topper, right? Okay. Um, so firstly, we have Bowmaster. It's a good card. It's already great positioned in the meta game, but in here it's also really nice with a Knight Errant to convoke it out better. And of course, also great with Renota, giving her two additional triggers just by itself. It is important to time them correctly. Do not be afraid to use them at sorcery speed. If the opponent is tapped out or the hand is revealed and you know that there is no removal or like counter magic in there, if you know Bomis is good in the matchup, <coughs> brainstorm, <coughs> and with Knight Errant you have to play them at sorcery speed often though anyways. But it is of course also a great thing to flash in, often that's the better choice. If they pass to you for example with open mana, then you can for instance set up also like a Venota out of nowhere. By the way, as, as soon as turn 3, uh, if you have a halfling on 1, and then a colony garden on turn 2 or an additional 1 drop, then can have as much as uh, 3 Venota triggers on turn 3. 
And then Sharina, uh, gotta keep him graveyards clean. That's one of the best ones to do so, if not the best creature for that mana cost at least. Um, try and find me a two mana creature that excels the entire graveyard uh, with two toughness, please. And that also has other great utility like uh, Sharina's protection effect. It's an EDB. That's firstly, of course, hard to interact with, and then also great with this card Ephemerate. Even at instant speed, sometimes you want to wait until their turn with that, especially if they might have removal open, and uh, yeah, feels pretty good if they target one of your many EDB creatures, if you would have the Ephemerate available, of course, and can then flicker in response. And yeah, the granting hexproof for humans, uh, you obviously want to think about Venota or also something like the Cathar, is uh, also great for Excel effects like Leyland Bindings or Elk effects, I guess, uh, from Planeswalkers. And uh, yeah, the Indestructible can also come up if some like wild Gandalf might appear with, you know, Supreme Verdicts. And then you want to look for Jarena with the Venota triggers as well. And of course, that's a really nice way to dig for Jarena, the Venota, Knight Errands, Once Upon a Time. Um, especially if you also need the Excel effect. Great card in this deck, great card in this meta right now. And uh, by the way, she's also a legend opposed to Peddler, which is in general better for double spilling with the halflings. Then we have two mana, not discard, exile any non land card from the opponent's hand. Jesus, pretty good. It's toxic, but this is the kind of thing you want from one of your humans that you can actually also cast on Curve and Timeless, but actually would also be something that you would want from a Venota hit, because this effect is just so good. To so just kind of screw up the opponent's follow-up plan, maybe it's the combo you want to break up, maybe it's a removal spell for Venota, maybe a good card advantage spell, it's now a juggernaut. You're welcome. And by the way, it has Vigilance. I, I don't know why it has Vigilance too, but you know, it also has that. And in case you didn't know, that's actually a pretty good keyword. For example, helps you to deal some extra points of damage and then still convoke out like a Knight Aaron of Eos post-combat. Same as the Peacekeepers, by the way, yeah, it's Vigilance is good. Um, maybe a little side trip when it comes to the mana base, because in regards to him, um, and also towards Jarena, kind of, but more him, do not play uh, the Kali Garden on turn one, as juicy as it usually is if you have no one drop available. Even if there's no Peddler in hand, if you know it's a matchup where Peddler kind of has to drop on turn two, if there's no uh, like Thoughties available as well. Uh, and again, even if you don't have it in hand, you could top deck it, um, like against uh, Titan Ramp, Blood Moon, York, Natural Order, Sneak Attack. Or even if they have like mana dork into potential Minsk and Boo, which just can, depending on your opening hand and what you can follow up with, of course, uh, can just win by itself. It depends, of course, you have to make a decision about that. But but any decks with like single cards that can just win by themselves, that can't drop on the directly following turn if you do not discard them, if that makes sense. And uh, also sometimes, even if that means if you have to top deck the other like Ors of Color Identity Land, and by the way, that also applies if you have like a Peddler in hand and an other good 2-drop like Bowmasters or Rope Line Attendant. You also did not run out the, the Greenland slash uh, Colony Garden on turn 1 if possible, even though if you have no 1-drop right and it would be tapped. Because the good thoughts is the Bowmasters or whatever other thing it is that you would have in hand other than the Peddler. Then you can cast your 2-drop, meaning Peddler, on turn 2. That can be just game losing by itself and... Uh, if possible, it's it's important to prepare the mana base in that way anyways, just as something to keep in mind. And since I don't have too many 1-drops and of course not 3-drops, uh, often playing the Colony Garden tapped on turn 3 and just playing another 2-drop on turn 2 is just fine anyways. Alright, um, then we have the potentially best token creator on Arena for the mana cost, of course. I guess I'm just gonna run a clip now or two, maybe. So yeah, it, it, it is nothing crazy, but it's two mana. And you want at least some sort of this effect in the deck, and this is the four off to do so. So yeah, that's that, I guess. Um, the next up we have the tree drops. And um, yeah, Cathar looks a little silly, like a like a standard card, but it's, if you look at the deck, it's like a Craft Hopper, firstly, because we have so much cheap cards. And the sole purpose of it is to have at least some swingy target with Nota in the deck as a potential hit. Often, by the way, they can also just remove it in this deck because of Giver and Tirina. And notably, the Jarena can be, for example, hit together with Finota as well, with a Cathar. 
I have to say, I was for sure looking for a permanent effect like that though, in human form, because of ephemerid. But I did not find one in one of these four colors. You can still use Endor for that, right? Um, if you hit a token first, like a messed armies, booze, food elks, or field symbols. Or also switch things up to a more concerning target. And you can also, by the way, ambush with a three power for a striker if it is nighttime with a ephemerid. Which, of course, in general, also conveniently works against the juggernauts. The back set also then is no longer a human for Renota, which is nice. And uh, the cycling to die at night actually happens more often than you might think even from the opponent, again, especially if you get protection up. And you can also help yourself by, for example, fetching a Giganta and holding a Bullmasters or Ephemerate up. Alright, then a Specialist. Made it into the deck last minute. It was a proud sideboard card until... It's just a bit better than Trespasser, I felt like, which was in that spot before. Since when it comes to Grave Hate, I think you really just want to get rid of all of it right away. And for that reason, I basically changed the Trespasser with a third Charina and exchanged then this Charina into the sideboard with the Specialist from the sideboard, if that makes sense. Because she legend, you know, and not each opponent is uh, heavily in the graveyard plan, of course. But yeah, this is just a great card. Uh, it is my only way to utilize my graveyard too, which you would want to do more in general. But I think that's fine, because graveyard is already popular. And so, for example, I don't have to care too much about cards like Pachuca Bog or also Deathrite Shamans if the opponent has green, notably. And the green decks are usually decent matchups anyways. But yeah, that's also for me a reason to not lean too much into the graveyard stuff um, in the first place. And yeah, if you look at them, all these CMC1 and 2 cards have barely any, if no downside at all, by not being able to attack or block. Convoke still works, which is great, especially if I get a token too, uh, as you can see here. Um, also, if nothing got discarded, removed, or traded in combat, which is usually the way how your creatures get into your graveyard, um, you can do also things like actively sacking your Jarena, if you really would need her effect in the matchup, or like suicide attack with something like the Peddler, if necessary, where then the Vigilance is by the way relevant then again. And yeah, also the perpetual token kind of creator effect from the rope lines, as you just saw. Uh, works with it. And the Kanta's lifelink, which is pretty useful versus like more aggressive decks too, also as a Venota hit, especially if you can power it up with the other big boys. Because for example, against Sue on the draw, I bring Blade Historian and Marauders as well. And then a card like this is super good to hit in general, also versus Burn, of course. Which was, by the way, the initial reason why the, why the Specialist made it into the 75, because I was able to switch him up with my other like lifelink target from the sideboard in series. Then, um, uh, yeah, I've talked so much uh, that card's broken. And I deck like this anyways, uh, looks at the top six, finds Venota, finds key cards, cards insane. Um, okay, now Ephemerate, uh, maybe a show more Eclipse. Um, yeah, it made it into the deck pretty recently uh, because of its low mana cost and it works just so well with all the ADB guys, right? And is also just another thing that also can protect Venota, which is great. So yeah, because in Timeless, in order to be able to compete with the very low to the ground and efficient strong cards, you need to adapt if possible, and this is just another approach to do so. Like in that clip just now, one mana make five tokens, and getting a Bomi trigger, turning around opposing Bomis and our Bomis, messing up combat steps against like attacking creatures, since you can assign the blocker first with the flicker, feels just way too good for just one solitary mana, in that deck anyways for me. And yeah, it also saves me sideboard slots for like more discard or grave hate because of the peddler and the third arena post board. With again also both being able to be found with Once Upon a Time, Knight Errant and Venota. So that makes it kind of really consistent to get them and then all and then also obviously being able to flicker them as well with the ephemerate makes this effect just really consistent in this deck. For example, the graveyard XL effect, if you really need it in the matchup. And yeah, it's another one mana card. I need to be able to double spell on turn three. Not so good already in this deck with that, so that really helps for this reason as well. Or uh, I guess at least be able to hold it up, depending on the situation. Then the Giver is also a pretty good card for that reason, that I also can play on turn 1, which is nice. Uh, it's also pretty good, uh, by the way, to mess up kind of uh, the combat step, since it's just mostly kind of disallows the opposing attacks for just one mana, seems good. And of course gives protection from removal for just one mana, pretty nice. By the way, you can also name uh, Colorless against Juggernauts or Channel Lands like Odavara. And um, often I'm just looking for that guy with Knight Errant, especially when I want to set up a Venota. And um, besides it being one drops that I need that I can also cast on turn one, I really want him to be creatures. And this is just one of the only creatures that you can actually play uh, with its power level that also has the two toughness. Yes, a set requirement. 
and then a Totsies, and again, because one group. Otherwise, I would have probably the Freebooter from the sideboard or something like Acquisitions Expert in the spot. It's basically uh, the Thoughtseize, uh, a sideboard card that is main deckable, right? I just needed, I feel like, in the 75 as a part of this counter package versus all these good cards that can just win by themselves, like Blood Moon versus this deck anyways, or like Natural Order kind of effects. All these cards that I, with this deck, just basically cannot ignore with this, like, good enough Venota plan, if that makes sense. Uh, hashtag death in Texas, I guess. I'm halfling, one mana ramp, uh, nice for red fixing, uh, especially also after Blood Moon, by the way. It's always funny, as you can also see here, for example. Um, it is a nice hit with Knight Aaron 2 if I really need a land, which is great. Um, by the way, you got the Skyclave for that reason in here too. But honestly, kind of just an under sideboard card main, since I just want this like uncounterable effect or Winota in the 75. And I just don't have place in the sideboard, of course, to just, just stuff in four halflings for that reason, if that makes sense. Which, by the way, I think is also like the reason why in Historic, even after like the Boomy nerf, people still played the halflings main, right? Because there's just no place in the sideboard if they need him versus counter spells. And yeah, I don't have enough fetches for the Threat Shaman. I want to save life with Sigurd since I'm a slower, less all-in Venota deck. I want the Caverns again. I want the Seizure also be able to bring it in from the sideboard, the second one. I want the Colony Gardens. There's just no place. And obviously I can solely rely on the opponent to fetch if it pleases thy lord and I would be the lord. And yeah, um, yeah, maybe this thing is also just one of the only ways uh, to gain life in the deck for me. If necessary, I can also flicker the bash for that reason. And it does work with uh, rope line, by the way. So you get the token also if you play it as a land, which is nice. Um, once upon started out as a four off, it's hard to make cuts. Hard's good. Let's you play a little less lands, helps you to find the right land, the key land even sometimes post board, maybe if second Busejo or third Cavern came in, or of course the key creature card for the hand like Hand Hate, an Enabler for Convoke or a Payoff, yeah. Well, by the way, take the third land, not Venota, take the Knight Errant, not Venota, most of the time anyways. Um, if you would play the deck in the first place, I'm just assuming that of course. Um, you get a feeling for it when Vinota is actually the pick, of course that sometimes is the case, but from the, in quotes, expert experience from my humble one, anyways, I think it almost never is. You just gotta set things up and there is so much like hand hate and removal. Vinota can be easily a 4 mana 4 4 if you do not know how to play the deck. Um, yeah, uh, Giganta, I need. I feel like uh, not only because I want my extra free card please, um, but versus Blood Moon, right? With that game one, if they have that early on and dodge peddler of seas, of course, it is at least not just an orderless, right? Because it's just so good versus this deck, that card. And um, then you would still be, if you hit your land drops, of course, able to fetch it, play it, sometimes hopefully as soon as turn four with a halfling out, be able to block with it right away, again, hopefully, and then float usually absent mana with it for the crew, right? It's good card, right? Free card, good elk. Okay, uh, yeah, maybe mana base now. Um, you just uh, gotta uh, think ahead uh, when to play what, when to fetch what. I was uh, earlier also referring to the turn one colony garden kind of scenario, stuff like that. As a rule of thumb, maybe, firstly, always make sure that the absent mana is online. Vinota can be cast of a halfling too, if necessary. And the deck is built to win without her in the first place, uh, unless you got here in hand, of course. And yeah, of course, in general, uh, thinking ahead, considering your hand, the opponent's hand, their potential lines, uh, your top decks, things you need to get done, things you need to draw into, you want to make sure to prepare the mana accordingly, which of course is true for every other deck, uh, especially with the fetches, but yeah. Okay, and uh, then when it comes to the sideboard and some considerations as well, I fear I do not have time anymore. I did write it out though, and I recorded it already, but yeah, that's three more pages. It takes a little bit too long for me now to put together in the editor. So yeah, maybe I'm just leaving the words document of the sideboard and the considerations in the descriptions and add some pictures or something like that. But yeah, uh, as I also mentioned in the very beginning with some extra text, now I'm going over the versions that did well for me with some gameplay. 
uh, starting with the Doomscar Warrior plus Blade Historian version, then only the Doomscar, then the first Giganta build with, I think, a Cathar and Trespasser then still, and then also a couple variants of this version here. Uh, also, just as a little side note, I'm basically only uploading when I feel like, and I am not sure when the next video would come. So just don't sub, I guess, lol. Okay, thanks for watching so far and see you in the arena.
The food. The food. Welcome to the feast. Your new look is in charge. It's not poisoned. Trust me. Welcome to the feast.
Vabbè. Cosa? È Death and Taxis? Quattro taglia! Your king, wild and sovereign, and it's not poison. Trust me. Ah, we know that. 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 Surely you see the humor here. One bite, and all your cares are gone. Oh dear. I invite you to change your ways. Welcome to the feast.
gaze into my face. Truth. Perché a volte oh, Peddler è bastardo? Your new look is enchanting. I'm not afraid! Scusate. It's not poisoned. Trust me. Going for a colony garden here, otherwise I would wait with the once upon a time, I think. I mean, there's an argument for halfling, but... 
Just gonna take this here. Okay, field. My hand's okay with this field. Kind of relying on finding Venota though. Needed to go for a land though. Can't just pick Venota. Hmm. I want to double spell, but I also want to play Rope Line Attendant first. I guess I can prevent them from going natural order into natural order if I take this out here. Make three dudes, make one dude, five. Gotta make a decision. Would be great to find the creature land and Venota. <laughs> I guess creature land is not so great. I just have to top deck an untapped land. And then probably another knight errand. I oh, know halfling, oh, for sure halfling. They're not playing too much interaction. Okay, expecting natural order or... I mean, it has to be natural order, right? Otherwise, they can't really compete. They don't get zombies right now, I think. Obviously, I can just top deck the untapped land too. Otherwise... Can they remove the halfling somehow? If I don't draw the land? I need to attack. This is one more dam or two more damage, right? We'll deal six instead of four. And I can't double spell with Rope Blind Attendant. But I have enough. To uh, creatures in play already, anyways. Alright, now it comes down to if they can go over the top with another Titan, because then I might not be able to beat it actually, because this version. Yeah, they actually have the other Titan, that is unfortunate. They concede, but they maybe should not have conceded, because I, I don't have a way to go over the top, um, but I do have a lot of Renota triggers. Two, four, eight. Might still have been enough, but I need the big boys that are coming now versus them. I have to reduce or take out the uh, the Giganta. Take out the mid range boys. Don't need Cherino. I guess Cathar is still nice. Maybe better than the. I, I can't take out a land because they play no interaction. Then is there any other good card versus their deck? Posejo is okay versus the, the field. I think I take the Thoughtseize on the draw, because that's a way to interact, even if they're on the play with a Grazer or Kami on one, and I think that is it. this is it. I could play Field of Ruins, so maybe I should add a basic, but they should show me that first. And now I think I say go. I don't want to keep this, but it's a pretty good hand if I manage to get a third land. And I do have a halfling. Really want this in the deck, though. Don't want to mulligan too much, though. The hand's pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. They go Kami. They play second land. I play top land. They play third land. They play a ramp spell. play other land. play my rope line. They play natural order. I play Knight Errand. I guess it's too slow. 
I need this in the deck, I feel like, since I'm so slow. You can keep it if they don't have the perfect start. I'm gonna try it, because the hand's so nice with... If I find the, the third land. If I know my... Obviously, if I know that my mulligan is gonna be similar, I would always mulligan, but I could just hit uh, five lands and a bowmaster and a halfling. And then I really wish I would have kept this hand. Kind of likely to draw the land, so I'm just gonna... Yep, but that's not the land I wanted to see here, of course. Yikes. We'll play it, though. Oh my god, they didn't have a Kami. Yeah. This hand does beat slower starts from the opponent, though, I think. So I'm just gonna... Play once upon a time next turn, and then either go Halfling or Robeline. Probably Robeline, since once upon a time should... Should find me... A white land, hopefully. So they did not either have Grazer or the green land, untapped land on turn one. I guess they didn't have Grazer, because otherwise they would always play the Colony Garden. That has to be it. But they still should have played Colony Garden then first, truly, right? Okay, looking for a white land. Then probably rope land attendant first, right? Get the black one, so I can also play Bowmasters. Also could take out the I can't I mean there's a pedal on was a it was, would have been a pedal on top, but I could again play around I have to just go over the top, I feel like. It's a, it's so annoying that I don't have this in the deck. I just wanna see what happens basically. And again they need to have natural order. If they would have double natural order, it would have been correct to take out the, the zero one here. But I don't know that. And I went through this exact scenario in hand, uh, in my head, and asked the question if I can win. And uh, the question, is, uh, the answer is maybe. And I still stick to maybe. The thing is... Okay, so... Double, I guess I have to play this and that, so that I have red mana if I find Venota. But then now Venota is gonna have trouble since I drew two of them. So now I need him to not have another Titan. And... Find Venota. I have a lot of non-human creatures in play. I have red with halfling. I can actually block the primeval titan. Especially if I do not find Venota. Can still top deck it, but we'll see. Definitely go for a block. If they don't have another Titan, maybe we even have a shot. But still have to get uh, my key card. That's my key card. I have a Surak in the deck and a Blade Historian. But I drew my Marauders, man. I had it in the opener. I was asking myself the question, can I still win? Maybe I can't. But I, I guess I'm about to find out. Probably. I know they, they don't have that in their deck and they don't have the colors, but I can't counter Venota and I can't remove Venota. That's the reason why Halfling and Giver are so nice. I can... They should have done the blasts on an upkeep, by the way. Now I can give one of the tokens protection, I suppose. It wasn't one red. But it is, yeah. Basically. Uh, this is a destroy effect, right? So protection doesn't help versus destroy. Mm. 
need to find Zurak. I will try to dodge knight errands if possible. Zurak is dealing 12 by itself, and Ota is dealing 8. So you really want the, the, marauder, the marauders as well. But yeah, it's enough apparently sometimes. Sorry for the wait, opponent. <clears throat> Played a tapped land, probably. I could have hit another fast land, but saving the life is probably uh, more valuable than me maybe drawing the third fast land out of four. I think it's four. I think it's two courtyards. Yep, playing that now. Before we can, before I can play Bow Masters, and obviously that works well if they have the fetch land here as well. Only it works really well though if they also have a one drop like Deathrite Shaman, Thoughtseize, or Fatal Push. I guess Fatal Push is not too good here. Or well, tap, tap land, I suppose. Alright, so I want to go for Pedla because of Oko. But I don't care too much about Oko. I need to be proactive. I'm getting... I have an Ota in hand, so what am I going to do about that? Okay, that's good. That helps too. Do they have board wipes? If they, have, if they just have one, I don't really care too much about that, I guess. That smells like... No threat or board web or just this. Okay. I'm just going to beat you down with tokens, I suppose. I can double spell them with this next turn, but I'm just going to go over this now. After all their brainstorm shenanigans, they could have saved one card, I guess, on top. There's a path of peril. I guess I will have to take that. I guess before I pick something else, accidentally I'm just playing this. Right. Yeah, now the plan is to just beat him down. Really glad I waited with the Peddler, so it made it more likely to hit a board vibe, and also this way, obviously I developed the board faster. I get an extra token. Oh, there's Bowmasters, finally. I want him to scold this. Um, although, I mean, I wanted to play Bowmasters, but I'm just gonna play this honestly. This puts more power in play, it's just one more power. And then I still have a good follow-up if they have a board wipe. 
And they surely don't have the third brainstorm. I already played up the beanstalk. Okay, so they can... Wait, why did I get this one? I, get, I can smash it in, so it's three mana. Oh, it's already, it's already two mana, the, the binding. Okay, probably just get Gigante here, hold the Bowmasters to play around the board wipe. Because of Cage, no point in playing Venota. And then just flash in the Bowmasters. They might go for a double block. If they double chump, I think I'm okay with that. And if they double block, I will probably play my own Bowmasters. I would love to hold them back because a board wipe is how they can come back, so I would love to see a double chump. Or just a trade with her. Okay. Oh, they do go for this. I mean, it's surely not a bait, right? This also plays around counter spell, I suppose. So let's just do that. The Gandalf, huh? Teach him a lesson. Anyways. Okay. Um, this is a keep. Kind of want to use once upon a time because I don't want to draw a land, but then again, I could just draw a land. Anyways, I'm never too sure what to do with three lands. I'm also not too sure what to do with two lands. There's, well, that's why I use Bobble on the opponent, I suppose. To know about stuff like that. Take Bowmasters, take Robline uh, Attendant, please. I kind of want to play Pedla on turn 2, though, and then it's nice to have another 1-drop to pair with a 2-drop, but I don't have the 2-drop, so might as well just go for this. Storm. Oh, they have Lurus. Is there anything scary with Lurus? No. I mean, they could have. I have two in order, so I don't really care too much about. I think, honestly, you think you could make a case for just playing another rope line attendant, because. I mean, if they remove it, you just play the rope line attendant. Oh my days. I guess they almost, they almost have, no, have no cards left. Or if I just take Lurus, I just play Peddler for sure. I guess they have no cards in the grave, I don't really care about Lurus. I guess they have Bobble. I guess they don't also know they don't know about Peddler. I could still play Venota since I have one trigger, but I'm probably just gonna play Rope Line Attendant and hopefully uh, hopefully another creature from the top. I just play this, right? I guess Venota also makes a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I'm not playing Venota. I could play Venota and then wait a turn, but then might as well just play this. Uh, I wanted to... Uh, oh no, what a top deck. Uh, it always comes at the right time. land. Do I have to play around the counter? I mean, no, because I have to do a block, I guess I do. I guess I don't. Not yet. Not with 20 life. 
I will go for one Renote because I have another one. I'll play this to pay. I don't pay one life. I play this to not pay one life. They're both times two, huh? But I have to use the removal uh, now. The Fatal Push or something like that. They also didn't know about Renote, so the definitely was were probably incentivized trying to get a removal. But apparently they don't have it. Or possibly timed it wrong, but that's unlikely. It's possible they're not too high ranked. I mean, they definitely should have played the Bullmasters before the combat, but not that it would have done anything anyways if they don't have removal there. Or a counter, I guess. Let's see what's up. Whatever it is, they should have played it before. I should have also targeted one of my non-tokens with that. Already only just 2-2. Two -two. Looks like lethal. I so did want it to leave at 23. We'll see. Maybe we can do one more. We'll see. Alright, we'll have to go... Because I want to... I mean, I could play Bow Master some turn too, but I probably want to just lead with... White land and give her. So I'm just gonna play this now. Take the paths, perhaps. Nah, I can't really afford to, I guess. I guess I could take. I don't need green right now. I don't need green. I have to call the garden. I think I might just actually take the pass, take ores of land, and then I can still play the bullmasters, can still play the peddler. Seems weird, but I like it. Versus counter spell shenanigans. For humans, and then kick things off. The, kick things off with a pedal, I guess. And obviously, this is why Giver is so great. Forced to use a valuable removal spell on that. Can't be counted already, which is nice. That's why I took it. Well, that's part of the reason why I took it. I was thinking about Venota and stuff like that, but oops. Yep, that just happened. All right. 